<laughs> okay, so yesterday we talked about the probability of things happening with the word and. Like, what is the probability of rolling a six and drawing a jack from a deck of cards? The word was and between them. Mutually exclusive event is with the word or. Okay, so a mutually exclusive event are events that cannot happen. So, um, like I can't draw a two and a jack at the same time, right? So they're two different cards, but I could draw a red jack at the same time. Does that make sense? We'll practice. So we have to figure out if they are mutually exclusive or not. Drawing, drawing a king or an ace from a deck of cards. Can those two things happen at the same time or not? You just, yeah, because you're only drawing one card, right? So can I draw two different ones at the same time? No, so it's mutually exclusive. I'm just going to put M, E. They are mutually exclusive. Drawing a yellow marble from a bag full of red, blue, green, and yellow marbles. So drawing a yellow marble out of that bag of random marbles, is that mutually exclusive then? No. I'm only drawing one marble, can it be two colors? No, so it's mutually exclusive. A drawing a red card or a jack from a deck of cards. Do you have a jack of cards or a jack of diamonds, or are those mutually exclusive? So I guess let's look here. Do you guys see the difference between one and three? Yeah. Yes. And a king and an ace are two separate cards. I could not draw a card that had an ace and a king on it, right? There's no such card. But could I draw a red jack from a deck of cards? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference. Those can happen at the same time, whereas these can. So if we want to find the probability of a mutually exclusive event before we multiply the, prob the two probabilities, but today we're going to add them. Okay, we're going to add the day. Let's say our events are not mutually exclusive. It's kind of weird because we're first going to add the probabilities, but there's this overlap between your two options, so we have to subtract the ones that they share. So first you have to add, and then we're going to have to subtract what they share. Otherwise we like double count our odds. Okay. Let's see here. A card is drawn from a standard deck of playing cards to determine whether the events are mutually exclusive or not. Then find the probability. So first let's decide. Probability of drawing a two or a king, mutually exclusive or mutually not exclusive? Mutually exclusive. Ah, that was a way better. Perfect. Okay. So it's mutually exclusive. Now, what are my odds of drawing a two? How many twos are in a deck of cards? Four out of fifty-two. Four out of fifty-two, right? Four out of There's four twos in a deck of cards? Yeah, you can reduce to one. Yep. We can reduce it, right? Okay, if I do one out of 13? How about let's leave it like this for right now? You have to reduce. At the end, you will. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what are the odds of drawing a queen? Right, so plus four out of 52. So if we add those together, eight out of 52 reduces to what? 213. Okay, our next one. Probability of drawing a seven or a club. Not mutually exclusive, right? Because doesn't there exist a uh, 
seven o'clock. Yeah. Okay, sorry, but not mutually exclusive. Now we go through the same process. What is the odds of pulling a seven? Four out of fifty-two. How many clubs are there? Thirteen. Plus thirteen out of fifty-two. But now we have to subtract what they share. How many seven of clubs are in the deck? One. One. So we have to minus one out of fifty-two. I think this is why I wouldn't reduce till the end because if you reduce, you'd probably get different denominators, and when you add and subtract fractions, they have to be the same. So I would wait to, re to reduce till the very end. You might not have to at all. Okay, so 4 plus 13 minus 1, 16 out of 52. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what does that reduce to, guys? Four thirteenths? Do you guys want to try the next two on your own and see if you get them? Just try. If you don't get them, then just hang tight and come back together. I think most of us are done. So diamond, uh, probably diamond or heart was mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. And what did your end result be? One. One half. Half, right? Okay. Next one, probability of spade or an ace? Mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Not, not mutually, mutually exclusive. exclusive. Perfect. And what was your end answer? Four thirteenths. Do I get that? Yeah. I think mostly everyone. Good job. Trevor reaches into a can that contains 30 quarters, 25 dimes, 40 nickels, and 15 pennies. What is the probability that the first coin he picks, picks is a quarter or a penny? So is that mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? You have two different coins, so mutually exclusive. You don't have to write that, but I think it helps if you do. Okay, how many total coins are in that can? One, ten. So there's 110 total coins. What are the odds of grabbing a quarter? 30. Plus the odds of grabbing a penny. All right. So what? 45 over 110? What does that reduce to? Forty-five percent of your percent person, whatever you want to do. Okay, and the next.
next problem, we're given a table. Because according to the table, what is the probability that a student in a club is a junior or on the debate team? So first, let's decide mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. Not, not mutually exclusive. exclusive. Right. Because you could have a junior on the debate team. Okay. Perfect. So not mutually exclusive. So what do we first need to figure out? Totals. Yeah, so why don't you guys go in total how many kids are in that table? Go through and add you know, how many kids are in that table. How many total students are in that table? 100, right? Okay, so now what is the probability that a student is a junior? So I have to total the junior column. Does anyone know what that was? 39. 39. So 39 plus the debate row, which is how many? But now what do I have to subtract? Six. Right, do you guys see, look at that overlap right there? Does that make sense more visually? Why we have to subtract that six? Alright, what do we end with? 11 over 25. So 44 over 100 first, and then if you simplify it, 11 over 25? How about you do the last one? If you get it right, I'll give you your worksheet. 